Hello, Jedi religionists, Jedi realists, Jedi path workers, and anybody else from any other Force-based tradition or tradition that observes the Force in some way, welcome today to a Jedi path working video about the light and the dark side of the Force. Now these are the most discussed topics in the Jedi community at one point and now are avoided, relegated to unimportance possibly, or discussed only as a moral philosophy. We're going to be hitting on a lot in this video. I'm going to try to keep things as concise as I can, other than the introduction, because I like to give a lengthy hello. And with that, let's dive in. So the first thing to look at with light and dark as concepts of the Force is the philosophical duality. And it's really odd that there is a, a dual contrast within a force that is considered a universal flow, a universal something that exists in all things. If it exists in all things at its base level, it cannot have sides. The reality is that the perception of anything having a side in our reality is here. Nothing has a division between it. And I say this, and I'm going to pull on a little bit of quantum physics for this, and I hate doing that because it gets misquoted and misunderstood. But we're reaching a point in our understanding of things like string theory and what they now call quantum foam, that there is no division between anything. There's always something there between things. There's always some connecting something. Now, I'm not going to say we should apply that as a proof of a spirituality, but it is interesting that the concept of duality, of divisioning, and segmenting, segregating concepts and ideas as essences has fallen out of favor even within science itself. And spiritually speaking, the concept of a division between light and dark often comes more from Abrahamic religions and traditions, of which was pulled from for the original Star Wars. So it is in there. And the Legends continuity, we see that break apart heavily as time goes on until greater understandings of the essence of the Force being all come into being, which is also something found in deeper Abrahamic studies, which most people don't get into. Uh, just as a real quick note, when you get very deep into Abrahamic studies, especially Jewish uh, Kabbalism, you understand that God is in all things. If God is infinite, God must be everywhere. Now, I'm not going to say the Force is God, but I'm going to say that if the Force is within all things, a part of all things, flowing through and connected to, if it is the essence of all things, then it must be everywhere. So it cannot have sides. So the duality happens up here, and it happens in here. It happens with how we use things and how living beings interact with things. And that's an important note. The concept of light and dark only starts to occur when you have either a division philosophically between ideas of good and bad, right and wrong, creation, destruction, whatever you have in there. But moreover, in the mythos, and the mythology, it's only a concern when you're using the Force. And I'll get into that later. So the light side and the dark side, we're initially brought to understand these from an emotional spectrum point of view as well as a moral point of view with the emotional spectrum side positive emotions emotions that you gravitate towards as i suppose a carrot to do things or to experience things or to be a part of things those emotions are the light side and the dark side would be the negative emotions the ones you want to avoid most people don't like being angry because liking something is a positive. But to be fair, I think most people who utilize anger in any way like it a little bit. As someone who's utilized it in the past, and we'll get into how I can still to this day later on, I think most people who utilize or work with their anger in any way, be it transmutive or be it expressive, they enjoy it to some degree. And... This is because that duality breaks down really quick on the emotional spectrum. 
you can be joyously sad. You can be overcome with grief for a change and yet be totally happy. Um, many fathers, when they give their daughters away, uh, and I mean at weddings, you know, no humor intended there. When they give their daughters away, they're overcome with grief and happiness. Why? Because it isn't really divided, but that division has come to be something we believe in. So it's something that we start out with in the mythology. And in the mythology, it is said that anger and fear are what leads to the dark side. In fact, you never hear them say that it is the dark side. You hear them say that it leads to it. And that's important. But this is one way in which many people split the force, is just how you're connecting from an emotional state. Placing the light in concepts of joy and placing the dark in concepts of anger, as an example, or fear. You know, contentment versus fear. Um, courage versus fear would be another good one for that. Now, within that, the reason I would say this is very imperfect for our purposes is that while anger can certainly lead to the dark side as fear can, it isn't the dark side. Even in the mythology, Yoda makes the statement that suffering is the dark side. We'll get into that in a minute. The other concept we get into seeing this quite a bit is it from an energetic concept. And we see this as they tap into those emotional spectrums. The light side gives creative, constructive, healing, life-bringing oriented power. Whereas the dark side brings the opposite, destruction. It brings death bringing power but there's other concepts we see the flowing harmony versus the raging river the sustained flow versus the burst we see this in the more recent obi-wan versus vader fight in the obi-wan uh series i want to call it a movie but it's like a movie really one of the one of the ones i like the best of the new things that have come out we see this also in the difference between how certain Jedi in the mythology utilize that flowing harmony versus the burst, the, ra the raging river, as it were. And in creation versus destruction and the fact that the light side is a path to healing abilities and the dark side is a path to destructive abilities. So we see this stem from that connection. I don't believe that connection is completely there. And in the Legends continuity... In the Legends mythology, we see that challenged with things like Electric Judgment. We see Darksiders learn to heal. We even see that in the original trilogy and prequels as the creation of Anakin Skywalker is thought to be a dark side act of healing, of creating life through the dark side. So then we get into, don't tell anyone, but the reality of what is usually being spoke of in the mythology, which is the moral concepts of good versus evil. The problem with this is that, for the most part, good and evil are very rare in this world. Good is pure, total altruism, which most people get even a sense of satisfaction out of altruism. And while that is still good and altruistic, one can be driven for the basis of praise to be altruistic. And that is not in and of itself good, is not light by its nature, whereas evil is by its own nature, again, destructive. So we get, we get that tied in where the morality of creative versus destructive, but for the world to exist, creation and destruction must be balanced and there must be a continual cycle. You eat, you breathe, you create, you destroy with every movement. You're not acting within the dark side or the light side during that. You simply are being. This is where we get into the fact that the force itself, being infinite and within all things and of all things, doesn't really have these sides in this way. But when you start polarizing anything in one direction, it will continue to retain those traits. A mountain does not have light and dark, but if you chisel into it with a high pressure water spurt for a long enough time, like a water cannon, or even with just a river, you can carve away a place where the mountain then has darkness under it, and therefore light above it when the sun is up. 
So these concepts, as a moral concept, while they are the most used reference in the mythology, don't completely encompass all of it. We have to take all of this in to understand it in the mythology and then to apply it as a functional system in our day-to-day -day lives. So then we get into chaos and harmony. And this would be the Bogan, the Dark, and the Ashla, or the Ashla, the Light. And as concepts, this is where we get into Jedi philosophy. And this is very important that you understand this. The Jedi believe that in all things there is some order. All things come and go within some concept of order. Chaos is an illusion. So all things have harmony, if you will. Order is probably too strict a word. That implies a regimentation. Harmony. Let me correct myself there. Harmony within all things. Chaos is a mere illusion. And that all good comes from harmony on a grander scale. And all evil, all suffering, comes from chaos that has not been brought to harmony, but that when you move further away from a closer immediate view, you'll see the greater harmony in all things, as the Jedi seeks to do. I'm quoting Atori Miko on some of his works and his deep dives into the Ashla and the Bogan philosophies for the Jedi. So that's not original thought from me. I got him. I got to call him out there on that. So how does this all tie together? Well, what we have is a system in which when one is focusing on positive or neutral focuses, they are then able to act in a state of constru constructive, helpful, bettering self for all those around them. So we're moving from the emotional side of that duality of this thing that is not dualistic. And then in that, they are more likely, not always guaranteed, but more likely to be within the moral right and acting within a moral essence of good and utilizing that to help others and make a better world. And from that, they are acting in harmony with the rest of the force itself to do this. They are bringing harmony to where there is chaos, to where there is disorder, when, where there is disharmony, if you prefer. Now, the Jedi and Sith view these things very differently. The Jedi view this harmony as a standard whereas the sith believe that to truly gain power they must disrupt this harmony to then utilize it towards their own gains so the jedi philosophy then is one of finding inner peace and focusing on the positive aspects of the emotional spectrum as guideposts but not investing into them because they don't want to achieve that polar swing that can occur on the emotional spectrum, which is a well-known phenomenon, when you're very happy, very joyous, it is easier to become that much more angry if something throws you off balance. Whereas the Sith philosophy is to polarize their emotions as rapidly as possible to gain a greater access to the Force. Do both of these work? Well, yeah. Yeah, they really kind of do because what we're dealing with is that Anything that amplifies your focus amplifies your connection to the Force. And a complete state of peace is a perfect state of focus. It may be the strongest state of focus, which is why it is said that the strongest Jedi Masters were always stronger in the Force than the strongest Sith Lords at the time. However, by that same contrast, it is easier to work yourself up into an emotional lather being a being that has emotions then it is to find a perfect state of peace, which is why on average a Sith Lord was stronger than a Jedi Master. Does this apply in the real world? Partially. As you amplify negative emotions, you will get a surge of energy, both from chemical processes in the brain, but also from the force itself. This surge of energy, the surge of ability to do things is easier to tap into it is easier to work yourself up into a lather from a physical standpoint. However, in a hyper state of relaxation, you can allow your muscles to move with complete efficiency. And in a state of complete efficiency, a state of flow, in uh, karate they call it mushin. In that state, you can then move without restraint of self. So you're not keeping yourself tense. So you tense up and hit someone, that works a lot better than just hitting them. 
but a lot worse than being able to flow and go all the way through with the strike in a solid steady movement where all of the muscles are used at all points during the transitional phases. See those martial arts teach you about how the force works. Very important that if you don't have if you don't have experience in it, you at least have some study to understand these things from a physical point of view. So, with these two philosophies, both of them being right, how is this addressed in the mythos? Well, most people will tell you, the Jedi move to the light and they avoid the dark at all times. And when it comes to causing suffering, when it comes to the dark side as a concept of evil, that is absolutely correct. The Jedi avoid being morally evil, whereas in the Sith philosophy, power is power, morality is thrown aside. For the Jedi, they recognize that they serve a greater good in their actions, even if that greater good doesn't have an order behind it or doesn't have an ideal behind it. And when I say an ideal, I mean a name that you can just rubber stamp on it. With that difference, let's also say that when it comes to using the emotional and the energetic sides, the Jedi don't see the forces having sides at certain points. So much so that some of the most well-known names are the ones that use both sides of the force. The first one, chronologically speaking for our purposes, would be Mace Windu. This is because from the prequels, he is really kind of the first, but he's not the first chronologically in publication. In the mythology, the first one we see is Kyle Katarn. Uh, and I probably butchered the name. Kyle Katarn, sorry. Kyle Katarn. And with his use of the Force and with Mace Windu's, they realized that if they could keep themselves from falling into the emotional spectrum of what they were drawing on, if you draw on this aggressive, powerful state, you can utilize that, but you cannot keep an attachment to the emotion. You cannot hold on to it. You can use it for a time to achieve a goal. Luke Skywalker masters this, and during the Vong War, all of the Jedi, it seems, had to master this on some level and had to overcome this limitation of the idea that to use an emotion was to hold on to the emotion. Now, through the meditative techniques that hopefully you're practicing and the different experiences you've had as a Jedi and that you're going to have, you will learn to have emotions come and go, both positive and negative, allowing you to access an emotion utilize it and then set it aside overcoming this can be a powerful tool for a jedi in this way you use all of the force without having sides but the dark side still has risk as does the light if any of my sith friends are out there if you heal for too long you do too many positive things you'll find you're called to that path if you want to be self-serving you cannot be serving others frequently Know many Sith who have went through life-changing decisions ultimately because they recognize that their life has become one of service to others, whether they intended that or not, and they cannot now focus on themselves. For a Jedi, the reverse becomes true. And both of these can lead to the dark side in, in their own way when it concerns the moral dark side, which is what we are sworn to stand against. So, you overcome this division of emotional connection, how can that lead to the dark side? Well, the reason it can lead to the dark side is that you can become reliant on those emotional states to use the force at all and to get very much done within it or within yourself. When you become reliant on those emotional states, you build a pattern internally and then you can't use the force without anger you can't tap into it without fear and that's a very bad place for a jedi to be you basically have to start over in your own core training at that point if you've reached that point most people i don't think ever get to the point where they've totally fallen in that way but sometimes you will and if you do you have to start over you have to start focusing on those calming meditations reaching a state of oneness with all so that 
all things within you exist, but you don't hold an attachment to their existence. You acknowledge and you let them go. And in letting them go, you may access the full spectrum of the force. This is necessary to avoid the fall, that you be able to let go. And the ideal solution to this is that you rarely rely on the dark side of the emotional spectrum or the positive side of the emotional spectrum. So you don't have that pendulum swing. And we see in the mythos that the Jedi there come to the same conclusions that most of us here in the real world have, even after we've tried to toss aside many of these ideas. The truth is, if you are invested in a concept that you are righteous, good, and holy, you are just as likely to hurt people as if you invest in a concept that nothing else matters but what you want and that you are the ultimate most important thing in the world and that your selfishness is the ideal and that any emotional impulse to get you there is warranted. Both of those are just as fast to get you to a fall. The only difference is the concept of the light side of the emotional spectrum does come with it the fact that you do believe you're the good guy so at least you're checking against it whereas with the dark side if you're relying on it from an emotional spectrum only you know that's your core focus that's the only thing you use as the negative aspect you may have stopped believing you're the good guy and stopped doing that internal checking but this is why we preach introspection so much because it prevents the fall to the dark side. And the fall to the dark side is where you are willingly creating suffering for the sake of the suffering, for no other purpose, simply to cause another harm for your own joy or for some greater benefit. A Jedi will cause harm in circumstances where it is necessary, not just for a greater good, but to prevent greater evils as well. Generally speaking, other traditions don't necessarily hold that view. This is why it is so hard to use other traditions as your guidepost for being a Jedi. Because we are a very limited subset in how we see this. We have to understand all of this. It's not enough to understand the morality or the emotional swing side. It's not enough to understand the harmony versus the chaos. It's not enough to understand the philosophies it's not enough to understand where it could be. We have to understand where we are at every moment and constantly be improving and bettering ourselves, as it says in the code, as it says in the oath. So with these things, this gives you a picture of the light side and the dark side. Can you use anger? Yes, but you can't hang on to it. And if you find you're using anger frequently, and it's not a specific measure, but if you can remember the last time you used it, and it doesn't seem like a long time ago, and that is frequently an occurrence, where that memory of it is available as a very present thing, then you're probably overusing the dark side. And at that point, I should say you're overusing the dark side of the emotional spectrum. At that point, you are falling to the dark side. These words are such a, a tangle to work with because we apply light and dark to all of this. And it's been ingrained up here over dozens of years and hundreds of books, thousands of movies. Well, sorry, thousands of books and hundreds of shows and dozens of movies and, and small snippets. And but also thousands of movies in the common media where good versus evil is happy versus mean. If it was that easy for good and evil to be defined at every time and every place, finding the bad guys would always be easy. We'd just look for the grumpy people. But sometimes the grumpy people are on the more positive path and sometimes the most joyous are joyous because they're just hurting whoever they want to. For a Jedi, we have to seek center within all things, at all times. We can reach out outside of center to do the job of a Jedi, especially the job of a Jedi Knight. 
but we always have to come back to center after. When I speak of the light side and the dark side, most often I speak of good and evil. That is the representation I speak of, in which the emotional spectrum only plays a small part of getting us there. That's why one of my favorite quotes remains, I don't come to the light to win some kind of war. I come to the light because it is the light. I am good not because I want to win, but because good is good. It's that simple. I hope this reaches you in a good place. I hope the fact that we use the same words for 37 different concepts has not disillusioned you from a further exploration of this and deeper introspection into yourself and into the Force. And I hope you keep meditating and training. As always, Force guide and protect you.